Birchko is a tiny piece of territory of great national significance. For the Serbs, it's the lifeline uniting the two main areas of Republika Srpska. For the Muslim Croat Federation, it's the gateway to Croatia and Europe. Today, under Dayton, Birchko is divided by a four kilometer wide zone of separation, with the Serbs controlling the city and the Federation, the outer villages. Keeping the peace in the middle of the zone are the Black Knights, American soldiers who are part of NATO's 60,000 strong Bosnian peacekeeping force, known as I-4. Their mission? To keep the lid on violence in Birchko's disputed Posavina corridor and to create a climate for free and fair elections. Birchko is certainly a flashpoint, a potential flashpoint. One might argue that um, as Birchko goes, uh, so goes Bosnia. Yeah, Roger, uh, Black Knight One. Lieutenant Colonel Tony Kukolo is the commanding officer at Camp McGovern. A man who relishes challenge, he also appreciates the very real threat of renewed fighting. Also, uh, I'll be conducting a compliance inspection today with the one -niner. Local people tell me, at least the Bosniaks in the south say, if we do not get Birchko, we'll fight for it. The uh, local Serbs tell me, if we... Uh, lose Birchko, we'll fight for it. New war. If the war were to reignite, there's a good chance this is where the first sparks would fly. Observation post nine. Uh, about 200 meters up the road from the last blue barrel up there is the northern zone of separation marker. Uh, you can't see the marker but uh, if you look past me, uh, past the destroyed houses, you'll start seeing a line of houses that have uh, brand new roofs on them or roofs under, dis under construction. From their vantage point in the zone of separation, the soldiers of OP-9 have already spotted a build-up in ground forces, but not the kind you'd first imagine. With military offensives off the agenda since last year's ceasefire, the Serbs are mounting a different attack. Just a few hundred metres from the checkpoint, a housing boom is underway. The aim? To pack as many Serbs as possible into the old Muslim neighbourhoods lining the zone of separation. Despite the visible American presence, many residents on the Federation side of the zone are still too scared to return home. One of the few who has made the move is Huso Bahor. Huso says he would never have come home were it not for the security provided by the troops just up the road. Even so, he's been harassed and victimised. The partly rebuilt homes of his Croat and Muslim neighbours ripped apart by explosives in the middle of the night. He has no doubts Serb nationalists were responsible. Central Birchko seems deceptively normal. People on the streets, people in the cafes. The only thing is, these are not the same people as before the war. Before Serb forces overran Birchko, every second person you passed in the street was likely to be a Muslim. Today, you'd be hard-pressed to find even one. 
Ethnic cleansing has removed any trace of the city's former inhabitants. All the mosques have been demolished, the signs have been rewritten in the Serbian script, Cyrillic, even the street names have been changed. It's almost as if the city's 25,000 Muslim inhabitants never even existed. In May and June of 1992, thousands of Muslims and Croats were reportedly rounded up and exterminated, some of them here in the now derelict warehouses lining the harbour. Their bodies were allegedly dumped in the river, buried in mass graves, or according to some accounts, minced at a nearby factory. In the lead up to the elections, Virchko's population has risen dramatically. Nearly all Serb, of course. Today, 30,000 Serbs live in town, two thirds of whom are displaced from Sarajevo and other Bosnian cities. They are the people who decide Birchko's political future at the polls. <laughs> Kuzman Vukashim was a Serb officer who participated in the siege of Sarajevo. After taking nine bullets in the face and chest, He's lucky to be alive. In a city where property is a political weapon, his children's favourite board game is somewhat ironic. Like so many others, this veteran has lost countless friends and family, including his brother, who was awarded this medal after dying in action alongside of him. Now, he says, there can be no turning back. Dosta je krvi palo za ve četiri godine. Dosta smo dali mladosti. Ja mislim da bi bolje živjeli kad se razdijelimo. Braćo, pa se podijele pa žive bolje. Jedini način da bi bilo neki mir, da se postoje neke granice. Pa ćemo biti dobre susjede, dobre komišije. Nećemo ratu. And therein lies the problem for the international community. It has set in motion a whole peace process whose underlying assumption is that Bosnians want to live together. In Birchko, many don't. The problems are similar or the same. Mine and my, of my colleagues. <coughs> but we have some different views on our problems. Addressing UN officials and European ambassadors at Camp McGovern, the two rival mayors of Birchko make their pitch. The bottom line, both sides want the town and neither side is prepared to compromise. It means either life or death for both sides. For the Federation, it means the only way to the international borders. Now my question to you, if you were the arbitrator, what would you propose in order to allow both entities free passage? I think that the most real is that if I was the arbitrator, then I would have if, uh, I think that the, the most real thing, and actually if I were arbiter, arbitrator, I would have the follow current situation as the lasting one. The apparent lengths to which some Serbs will go to maintain control of Birchko was brought home with devastating effect while we were in the area. Three Muslim families who dared to rebuild within the zone of separation had their houses bombed in an overnight attack. According to UN official Rai Ryan, the key to peace in Birchko is not the elections, but a strong international presence. There should be some sort of uh, an internationalization uh, of the city for an indefinite period. 
Speaking of years, uh, uh, conceivably as long as a generation, maybe as short as five years or ten years. But there needs to be some kind of uh, serious military force uh, in the region, and there is one right now, you've seen it. Uh, uh, a force like that, if not exactly the same force, needs to stay in place to keep everybody cool. Of far greater significance here than the elections is the umpire's decision on who will ultimately control Birchco. That's due in December, the same time as the Americans are slated to go home. No matter which way the hammer falls, the prospect of war is high. For people such as Husso Bahor, who've chosen to rebuild their lives on the front line, the future is as uncertain as ever. When the stars and stripes are finally lowered here, the whole of Bosnia may well be holding its breath.